Hi, I'm Nico Hurtado. Um, today we're going to be going over how to do a color portrait uh, in tattooing. Um, I'm going to be working on my client, Junior. Uh, he has an ongoing piece that we're going to be adding to. Uh, it's a portrait of a woman that we took some pictures of. Uh, I'm going to cover the three most important things, I think, that uh, make up a color portrait in tattooing. Uh, the first is a stencil and position. Um, the value of the piece, and then color choice. And uh, to see more of my work, you can go to nicohurtado.com. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're starting to make the stencil, and uh, I'm using a number five mechanical pencil um, on top of the copy that I made uh, onto the piece of Thermofax paper. Um, right now, I'm actually... Uh, Picking either value, shape, or color choice to stencil out. I'm just going around the, the shapes that I see or, you know, whatever I think is important. It's real important to, uh, you know, make your decisions on what you think uh, the kind of information you need when, when you're doing this piece. You know, make it readable so that way you can understand it. And uh, I tend to go a little crazy with my stencils. It's just kind of where I'm comfortable. But make sure you're paying attention to uh, where you're comfortable. Like... You don't want to put too much information that got, then get confused. You want to just put enough to where you can read it. Uh, you'll probably go through a lot of lead like I do. Pressing hard, I tend to break it a lot. Um, so, yeah, just uh, make decisions. Make sure you uh, put what you think is important. Um, usually when I go through the hair, I'll use like a back and forth motion just following the direction. I really don't worry about, you know, too much... Uh, of the shapes just kind of go through the dark value and you know go back and forth you know you'll see little strands of hair I'll just outline really quick um, usually I like to get through the hair first because it's kind of the, the most boring part to stencil just try to get it through it real fast and then go through and start working on the face and getting those shapes I always have a little bit more fun working on those so I get through the boring part first now I'm starting to get the cheek. Um, as you can see, like the, the value is there isn't much different, but I want to make sure that I see the cheekbone there. That's why I kind of made those shapes right there like that. You're paying attention to where the cheek is and how it's shaped there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going through the nose, finding every single little bit of detail that I think is important and uh, making sure that uh, I'm not only doing my dark shapes, that I'm doing my highlights because... Um, that's really going to help you in the end when you're putting your highlights, making sure they're in the right spot, making sure the piece looks right. Um, so now I'm doing the eyebrows and just kind of go real quick. The eyes, making sure that uh, I'm following it round, making sure I'm paying attention to the way the eyelid's going over the eyeball and uh, really showing that it's a, a ra it's round in there, you know. Um, now the lips real quick and kind of just doing the highlights. I actually really enjoy making my uh, stencils. I think it's pretty fun. I like the way they turn out. Um, what I do is I just make the photocopy and then get my Thermofax paper, lay it right above, and then trace right above that. Sometimes I'll trace right onto the paper or I'll trace right above the whole Thermofax sheet and everything. As you can kind of see, I'm doing right now making a hand stencil. Um, I make this stuff. It's a... Uh, a melted down deodorant, uh, green soap, and, and distilled water. What I do is I take one full stick of a deodorant and melt it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Melts really quick, so you have to be careful. Um, then the same amount that comes out of that full stick, I mix uh, half green soap and half distilled water to, to equal the same amount of the deodorant that I have that melted down. I mix that together, and I put two caps of alcohol. It's a... Uh, the two caps from the alcohol bottle uh, into that like concoction, and then I leave it alone for a little while. So as you can see right here, uh, I just kind of pulled out the strip and was showing you how I get it ready, and then you can see how it turns out. Um, that concoction works really well, even with the handmade stencil that's not very dark. You kind of see how it turns out and how mine. So yeah, I use one sheet, lay it right above of the carbon paper 
pull that out. Just want to get it there. Usually I'll tape it down so that way it doesn't move because, you know, if it moves, you're going to mess the shape up. Then you just start tracing above it. And it should turn out something like that. Like I said, you know, just make it to where you're comfortable. You know, don't don't go crazy. Mine tend to be crazy. Like I said, just just be comfortable with it because too much information sometimes isn't a, isn't a good thing. You want to just make enough information that you can understand it. So right here, I'm going to get him ready. That's alcohol and green soap mixed together. I'm going to shave him down, clean him up, get him prepared for, you know, the stencil and the tattoo. Uh, make sure the skin's real clean and, you know, the, the, the area is real clean so that way he doesn't, I'm not pushing no bacteria, nothing into his skin. So I shave him down real good, clean it off real well. Okay, so now I'm most likely going to grab uh, my stencil. The stuff I just told you how to make. Uh, make sure to place, put the placement in the right area. You know, you don't want to blow a face up too big. Because, you know, you're working on something like a cylinder. Uh, you make it too big, the eyes are going to go real wall-eyed and it's going to look real funny. Um, you just want to make it big enough to where the eyes are looking in the same direction. And uh, it's not too big for the spot. Usually the smallest I'll go to is like 3 to 4 inches from chin to forehead. So, yeah, I put that stuff on. I wipe it down real... Uh, real light make sure it's just tacky as you can see it's pretty pretty wet but you don't want it too wet because then it'll smear so you press down real well and then peel it back real slow make sure not to smear um, there it is you know real simple and that's what the stencil look like let make sure to let it dry for at least 10 to 15 minutes um, it needs to dry really well and uh, for it to to really settle you don't want it smearing off so we're going to go ahead and put the ink out. I'm using a triple black from Eternal. It's a then plum, blue, periwinkle, wild orchid, dark red, uh, crimson red, uh, and then light red, and then tangerine. Uh, it looks like magenta, and then it looks like uh, another dark blue, blue, light blue, white, gray, grape uh looks like a tangerine and then something like kool-aid uh looks like georgia peach i got a flesh tone i have a flesh pot from me from intense uh flesh from intense i think i have creamsicle out i usually put two uh flesh pot as you can see there's a flesh and then a flesh and then a flesh pot and a flesh pot i put two out because uh you know, one's for my warms, one for my cools, so that way they don't get all mudded up. Uh, right here, I'm putting dotted lines. That way I don't go lower than what he wants. He wants just kind of like, you know, the half sleeve thing where it doesn't go below the elbow. So I use the dotted lines just to keep my, so I don't go too low and it doesn't, you know, go further than he wants it. Right here, I'm kind of adding some direction, adding some fit to the to, to the other piece that I have going on. going to leave a little gap uh, in between them. I'll kind of give it its own little place. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, one thing I'd like people to know is that, you know, right here I'm using a pneumatic machine. It's a great machine. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I, I still use coil machines, like the magnetic machines, and I love them. You know, uh, my favorite machine is an Aaron Kane machine. Uh, that's what I use. You know, most of my portfolio is done with that. Um, I had a chance to use these, and I really liked them. Uh, they're, they're really good. Uh, they kind of slowed me down a little bit, but, you know, the slowing down sometimes a good thing lets you get a little bit more detail, lets you build a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, I use both. Uh, th this is really, really uh, a good tool, though. It, it's it's a fun tool. It's kind of cool. to. It does something different than the, than the regular coil machine will do, um, Let you build a little slower. But uh, recently, I've been using the my magnetic coil machines a little bit more. I'm a little bit more comfortable with them, a little bit faster. But uh, I use the same motions, back and forth motions with both. Um, they run pretty much the same. I've um, actually been practicing with some rotary machines lately too. Uh, right here, I'm just kind of blocking in blacks. Uh, mix, I'm using a mixture of uh, black and purple to uh, get these darks in there. Uh, I usually don't use black straight. I usually mix like purple or plum or blue 
or green into it depending on on what I feel is, is the right area to use it but right here I'm definitely using a plum and black mixed um, I really like the eternal ink it's working really good because it doesn't get really like a hard shell over it after about four or five hours it, it stays really like soft on top you know I don't really have to put any water into it or anything like that when I put it out in my cap um, yeah so I'm just blocking in this dark hair looking at the picture making sure like my directions going the right way with the way the, the hair is rolling around um, kind of getting that end right there where I want it to fade off kind of you know going along that green so that way I'll make sure not to lose that because you know marker will wipe away pretty fast sometimes so just blocking it in and uh, really just working it from the bottom up I usually work from uh, you know the bottom right hand corner and uh, go up to the top left corner uh, I do that because you know I don't want to wipe my stencil away I used to block things in but I just feel way more comfortable like this um, if I'm doing two sittings you know, this is one past tattoo, but if just say I was going to do this in two sittings, you know, the guy wanted to only do four hours and then four hours or three hours and three hours or something, um, I would go through and kind of block the whole tattoo in like this, do all the blacks and then do colors that I think are important and just pass through that like that. But since we're going to be finishing it today, uh, I'll usually get it to pretty much to completion in the area, except for, you know, any highlights, you know, I don't want to wi wipe any darks into my highlights. So I make sure that, uh, you know, I just leave those open. So right now it looks like I'm mixing a little bit of green into my black instead of the purple. Uh, there's a little bit of green there. Uh, most likely it's probably, I don't know, like turquoise or something. So this is black and purple right there on that edge. And then as it gets closer to her neck, I'll be using a little bit of green with it. And you'll see right here. So I'm using green on this side of the hair you know, uh, um, for the shadowed areas, you know, there's a lot of red in the piece, so usually you want to use the opposite color. Um, you don't need to be such so straightforward with it. You know, you can mix a little bit more blue with it or, you know, another little bit more purple into it just to kind of change the tone so that way it's not so straight across. But it's it's good to kind of play around with it. Um, you can see it a little bit in the picture. The picture gives you a little bit of, so I'll kind of enhance it sometimes and make it a little bit more. So still just blocking this in, getting these these areas in and so yeah it looks like I mixed a little bit of a uh, dark green actually and uh, and periwinkle color from intense I use this color a lot it's a really good color I use it for a lot of shadows a lot of darker areas kinda a little bit of a grayish color it works real well so it looks like I'm using a little bit of like purple and dark red and brown right here and uh, yeah, just following the, the flow of that hair, you know, looking at the picture and just really making sure I'm going the right directions. And uh, this back and forth motion is really good to use. You know, it kind of lets you fade from one side to the other. You know, it doesn't give you such a hard edge. Um, I know traditionally you want to use a circle motion, but since I'm just feathering it in, really going light, uh, not really trying to pack it solid right away, I just kind of go like right here, I'll use more of like a circle motion, kind of fade out if I want it solid right away but the back and forth motion lets me build you know it's a real quick movement and doesn't really hit the skin too crazy hard and it gets it in there you know it lets you build it up so that's what I'm doing just moving back and forth and it looks like I'm using here like maybe some dark brown and uh, and purple you know maybe some red in there yeah, it looks like dark brown, dark red. Yeah, a little bit of water. One thing I do a lot um, is, you know, if I dip in my cap, I'll go ahead and uh, dip into the water really quick. Kind of lets that, that ink get a little bit diluted and lets it move around on the skin. So that way it's not so thick. If it's thick ink, it kind of helps me move around. It helps me fade it off too and lets me build. So it looks like I'm using a little bit of crimson, red, and uh, dark brown. And just kind of fading it back and forth, you know. It takes a little bit longer like this, but your uh, your fades and transitions will be really smooth, really soft. You know, it takes it takes a little patience, but in the end result, you know, is what matters. Um, these tattoos like this usually take me 
maybe six, seven hours on average, you know, but if it takes you longer, don't worry about that. It's all about the end result. You know, just take your time, make sure you're paying attention to the shapes. Um, things you want to pay attention to is making sure you're going dark enough. Like a lot of these colors are pretty dark, but that area called for, you know, darker colors. And that's really what's going to make your, uh, your highlights look better because you're going to have a good contrast. So I'm going ahead and uh, I'm budding up some red, some dark red right there with that green and letting it transition out of the shadow into this, you know, little bit of a warmer, it's a warmer shadow out of the colder shadow. So yeah, just now using more of a traditional circle motion since I know I want solid, I know what color I need and just kind of getting it in there. And yeah, like I said, you know, I work, I work the same way with the, with the traditional machine. So these, these things can be applied. I just turn my machine way low. You know, I like a soft hitting machine. That's why these, these, these pneumatics felt really comfortable. Um, regular coil machines, you know, I like it to hit real soft also, you know, uh, I really like these tubes I'm using also. These tubes are, are real nice. They're a next generation tubes. You know, I'm using, uh, Right now, I'm actually using a, a 17 mag. I make them. They're uh, bug pin needles, uh, but it's in a 17 mag needle. You fit in, it fits in a 15 mag tube. So it looks like I dipped from the dark reds into this tangerine color. It's a real good color for a lighter red. It's not too pink. It's not too orange. Probably looks a little bit more orange on here, but in person, it's a little bit more red. Uh, it's a real nice color. Um, so yeah, off that black right there, I use a lot of purple, just kind of going off with the purple and fading it off, making a cleaner transition to the skin. I'm not going to make that area too solid off. There's going to be a little gap because I want to tie these in together. And, and I like leaving some open skin, in some areas, some negative. I like the way it works with the body sometimes. So that was like purple and periwinkle mixed. It's a, it's a nice color right there. I use that a lot, uh, you know. Just fading this off. Remember, like, I'm using a, a really thin needle. So I'm, I'm able to build uh, a lot on the skin, you know, without really damaging the skin. My machine's also running really light. So, you know, it's not giving a whole lot of trauma. Um, and that's why I'm able to go over the skin so much and kind of build up back and forth motion. You know, as I'm coming out, I'm using a little bit more water, you know, so that way it fades off into the skin. I'm tapping into the water every time I go from uh, the ink caps to the skin. Rinse out my machine a lot, make sure it's clean, make sure I'm not muddying up my colors too. So I'm going off of the other one, doing a little bit of black. A little bit of black and purple. You can see it when I wipe it down, like there's that purple color in there. And you can see like, I'm wiping away from my stencil, you know, making sure I'm not wiping my stencil off, you know, I want to wipe away, I don't want to wipe into it, you know, the more I wipe into it, the more it's going to come off. Um, but you're going to have to remember too, I let it, I let it dry for a good 15 to 20 minutes, you know, before I started tattooing. I know it's a lot of time, but you know, if you're going to be doing a piece like this, it's kind of good to give it a little bit more time to dry and make sure it's going to stick really well. If you, if you make that stuff that I make, um, it should work really well and you'd be really happy if you're going to be working off the stencil like this. But if you're outlining it and you're going to be doing just color, just say it's not a tattoo like this, but you're applying some of this to it and you're going to outline, it might stick a little bit too well and it might be a little frustrating because when you're done with the tattoo, it might still show through. But I'd rather my stencil stick a little bit longer than not long enough, you know? So yeah, just using that back and forth motion, using a lot of periwinkle on this, using some purple and black right there on the edge, trying to make this clean. Make them go together. Sometimes it's good to take a little bit extra time and, you know, make things come together a little bit cleaner because, uh, you know, I've done it where I don't take that extra time and both the tattoos look all right, but they just don't connect very well. You know, it's good, you know, 15 minutes, something like that, help you a lot. So I'm still fading it off. I think I use a little periwinkle and light blue mixed right here and just kind of fading it off into the skin. Kind of making it roll into the form and, you know, and then coming out to the outside of the, the arm to give a little bit more 
flow to the body. Just say he wants to go a full sleeve. I can uh, bring that bottom piece into and wrap around his form, bring a little bit of direction through those portraits and stuff. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of stick some uh, periwinkle pur purple into the neck right here where I see a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of purple in there. So I'm going to bump that up and go ahead and get that in there. And that's why I have my shapes. That's why I, I stencil the way I do, you know. A lot of people tell me it's like color by number, which it kind of is, you know, it makes it a little bit more simple. But the less time I have to think about, you know, shape and things like that, the more time I have to think about, you know, exactly what color it is and where it's going. So that way I don't have to have too much of my mind I can pay attention to less and kind of refine it a little bit more so using some dark red and uh, fading that off of that that end that's why I use the back and forth motion because you know it kind of helps me uh, on those parts where it's a little dark on fades off on both sides you know I used to go straight across in the middle and sometimes each side wouldn't fade off enough for me so this has really helped me um, Just kind of getting that neck, still going to the red. Uh, looks like I'm going to use some dark brown, dark red mixed again. I'll be using that a lot in this piece. Uh, a lot of that color's in there. Kind of cleaning up that edge on the back. Yeah, so just being patient with these pieces makes a world of difference, you know. You don't really want to rush through a piece like this. If you know your max time for sitting on a tattoo and you're over it in like four hours, you, then, you know, break it up in sessions, you know, just take time to uh, to get through it, you know. You don't want to just knock something out as fast as you can and then be unhappy with it in the end. You, you want to take your time with it. So if it takes you two sessions to do it, it's fine. Just blocking the shapes. I usually do it all with color. Um, I'll use line work sometimes in certain areas, like, you know, You'll see in a little while, you know, around lips, things like that. Um, I'm still using the 17, you know, in the 15 mag. I'm using that. I use that most of the time for the big gradations of color. Helps me out. Lets me go a little bit faster through it. Um, actually, the needle I'm using is a, is a curved mag. It's a curved front. Uh, I like it a lot. It helps the colors fade from one to another also. Uh, but these these needles are very hard to get like I have to make them individually uh, Myself I make all the needles so it's a little bit extra time, you know But it's worth it to me to make the needles it I can't get a needle that or I haven't yet to find a needle That's pre-made that that they make like this with the same type of needle. It's a long taper bug pen, so Just just getting this jaw in there. I'm using like a dark brown purple To get the dark in the jaw some red in there just really paying attention to uh, making sure I'm looking back at my reference a lot, you know, making sure that uh, I'm really trying to follow what it's telling me and understanding what colors, not really looking at the whole thing, just looking at where I'm working and and really paying attention to, uh, you know, the darks and lights and the colors and not looking at the whole thing and getting, you know, like, oh, my gosh, there's so much going on or it's a phase, just kind of looking at shapes and color, you know, and the value of it. You know, you don't want to get ahead of yourself and get overwhelmed. You just want to want to kind of want to work in the area you're at and, you know, make sure you're paying attention to that and not getting confused. So right here, I'm blocking in some hair with some black and purple again. And I use a lot of that, you know, a lot of the blacks first and get those shapes in there and then kind of eyeball the rest. But if your stencils real well, you know, sometimes it stays there and helps you out and you can get the shapes even better. And it's good, you know, and. You know, just say I'm doing this and I'm doing the hair and I'm getting, you know, confused and I make a strand in the wrong area. Like, I don't stress out, you know, you don't want to stress out. It doesn't need to be completely perfect, you know. It's just, you know, using it as a guide, you know. And it's better, the closer it is, the better. But, it, you know, you just, you want to make it close enough. You don't want to stress out. And you also want to have fun while you're doing these pieces. And, you know, the more you get stressed, the less fun it's going to be and the more difficult it's going, you're going to give yourself. You know, just relax and have fun with it. You know, if you need to stand up for a second, stand up, put your machine down, take a break. You know, you don't want to just keep frustrating yourself. So so everything doesn't need to be perfect. You know, you're just kind of trying to make as close as you can. 
So yeah, so I'm just fading it off. I went from black to purple and looks like to red and that underneath the ear right there by the hair. Uh, using more of a crimson red now. Uh, that's what I kind of see in there. It's going to looks like it's going to go to a little tangerine. More like bright red right there. So yeah, so I, I'll use like um, uh, intense, uh, some intense colors. I use a lot of eternal colors. Um, if this was a black and gray piece, I'd be using a lot of uh, silver back ink. I, I really like those pre-made grays. Uh, once in a while, you know, if I'm doing a, a color piece like this, I'll use a little bit of the pre-made silver backs in there, depending if I need to, you know, stain a color or do something like that. But usually I pretty much stick to to full color when I'm doing this. Yeah, so now I'm sticking a little bit of dark right there. I left a little gap because it was a little hair strand right there, a little thicker one. Um, so I'll go underneath that shape, making sure I pay attention to where the light source is coming from and, you know, uh, going underneath that shape and doing some darks. I'll kind of work around my stencil that way I have a little uh, little bit of gap in the skin. You know, sometimes if I'm not ready to put it there, it works real well for me. Um, so, yeah, I'm using about probably a brown, black, maybe some plum. Uh, I tend to mix a lot of colors sometimes just looking. Uh, right now it looks like I'm using a, a five round. And this is a pre-made five round. Um, I used to use a lot of threes, but for some reason now I run my machines, like even with the coil machine, you know, these machines right here, the pneumatics run really, really low. So a five round, you know, makes like a three line really, really clean and consistent if you set it up right. Um, the same, I use like a, I use, I don't use liner machines really anymore. I use a lot of um, shading machines, real soft hit. I actually have a, a shading machine. It's a, it's a shader. It's a, what is it? Um... Uh, a bloodhound machine and it's uh, it, it runs really really super soft it barely pushes a mag but it's just enough to push a five it really lets me build my lines up instead of having to make one line completely solid right away um so right here you're looking at me i'm i'm, I'm doing some dark red and purple over what i tattooed already my, that machine's running so light that like it's not really doing any damage to the skin right there um I know it looks like I keep going over and over, but I seen this tattoo healed. Uh, it took about two weeks, but it healed really flawless. It still looks the same. It's been one pass. The guy heals real, really well. Um, so yeah, I'm running my machines really light, just letting it get enough in there. And uh, but yeah, it's just a solid. Nothing's lost. So yeah, I'm just cleaning it off right here. I'm using some uh, some soap and water mixed, and just kind of cleaning that up, putting a little bit of ointment down. Uh, I actually looks like he's taking a little break. Uh, he should be coming to sit back down right away. He's in a little bit of pain. So yeah, it's just right here. It's me coming back right here. And, uh, I put a little bit of a line work on the side of the face sometimes to crispen up areas where I want it to be a little bit sharper. Um, I'll use a color a little bit lighter than, than what just say there's black, you know, like there's definitely black right next to that face. Um, I'll use a dark brown uh, for something like this, maybe a dark red with uh, purple or blue into it. That way it isn't black, and that way the line's just not this crazy line when it heals if the black isn't as solid as the line. So that way the line heals up a little bit lighter, and, and it kind of it, it isn't such a definite line there. Um, so I'm just blocking in this hair, making sure I'm paying attention to the shapes and where the and the direction the hair is going. You know, I'll bring my mag sideways. That way I can kind of uh, follow the shape of the hair and the way it's flowing out. Um, this is black and purple mixed. Uh, same thing. Looks like purple and dark red right there as it comes out a little bit further and gets more into the light. I figured... Uh, you know, you guys would want to see something with a lot of reds, a lot of things like that, a lot of warmth to it. Um, a lot of times I have a lot of trouble with that, so I kind of wanted to see how it would be done. And, you know, it's it's hard to create that warmth sometimes. So I'm cleaning it off, making sure not to wipe over my stencil too much to, to wipe it off. 
and still using some uh, dark red and dark brown. So really paying attention, looking at my uh, reference a lot, making sure I'm making the right choices on the color and the value. One thing, uh, you know, a little truck, a little trick to to do, you know, if you're doing these color portraits and you're not sure if your value value is right, and you know, is once once you're done, just say you get finished with it, you know, take it into Photoshop and desaturate the picture and make it black and white after you did, you know, the the tattoo you did, and see if it still holds up shape. Um, if it still holds up shape, then then yeah, you're, you're putting enough value. But if it falls flat, it's because you're not using enough value in the piece. So. Then next time, you know, print out the same tattoo you did in black and white and uh, kind of draw above it with a pencil and get the reference and kind of see where you need to go darker. And that'll help your uh, pieces hold up, you know, and, and look more 3D. You know, you're, you're, you're getting your full values in there. Um, so right here I'm using a little bit of tangerine. Uh, it's a really good color. Uh, it's coming off the red. It's just really paying attention to the shapes right there. You can see how the lip is and even though there's no stencil there this is where drawing coming comes in um, that's one thing I hate is on some inks you know uh, they get a little bit hard so I'll have to like take the hard little shell off sometimes what I do if it uh, if it gets too hard or if I don't want it to do that I'll put one drop of uh, of water on top of it just to kind of you know keep it from hardening um, so right here I'm using tangerine and it looks like uh, Georgia peach and uh, I'm kind of just coming off of that red and tangerine I just did and following the shape. I really like these colors. It creates a nice little uh, flesh color. I, I, I use it a lot. So I'm just coming off with that Georgia peach and tangerine color. This looks like a little bit more Georgia peach than tangerine now. I'll dip half and half. half, and half. You know, and then just dip fully into the Georgia peach. Uh, this looks like a little bit of pink with the, with the red, you know, on the edge. Getting a little bit lighter so that way that shape holds up on the edge. Rinsing my machine out in between. You know, there's some gray there. Uh, I'll mix a lot of blue. I don't really like to use black and, like, gray colors straight. I like to mix other colors into them. Gives them a little difference of a richness you know not just black and white gives a little bit of life to the to the grays so I mixed a little bit of blue right now I'm doing a I did a little bit of looks like periwinkle and uh, maybe like a red and just kind of sketching in that uh I don't know what color yeah it looks our blue and periwinkle it looked like so it looks like a little bit of light magenta and blue to create a little bit of like a grayish purple and just kind of following that shape where that makeup's coming down. And making sure I'm getting lighter where it needs to get lighter. Just having fun with it, you know, not trying to be too perfect and too precise. Just trying to get the gist of what, what I see and, you know, rinsing my machine out. So, yeah, the palette gets a little bit crazy. But uh, I like it when it starts to get dirty. So... I see a little bit of red there. I'll punch it up a little bit more, like off those grays, you know, just to enhance it and have a little bit of fun with it. I'm not trying to look for exactly perfect. I mean, it would take forever if I wanted to get perfect. You know, you do layers and kind of get it like that. I just want close enough value and a close enough color choice, just kind of give the feeling of the picture. Um, right here, I'm using a little bit of dark red, kind of getting those shapes in there. Um, you want to make pay attention, you know, that, that that's... That's not such, it's a little bit of a warmer area. It's hotter. So you're using those reds right there. And, you know, I'm using that tangerine and light red mixed. You don't want to go over too far. As you can see by the nose, if you look at the reference, it starts to get a little bit cooler in that shadowed area. Even though there's another hot spot with the light, it's still cooler than where the red's hitting. So I'm using that five round again. I'm using dark brown, outline the bottom of the lip. You know, I like to I like to outline it because it holds shape up uh, over time. You know, I use a lot of color line, help it hold up and look cleaner. Uh, I used to use my mag and just kind of drag it on the side, but you know, I've noticed over over time it doesn't it kind of spreads out, doesn't hold up the same. 
you stick a couple colored lines in there in the sharper areas and it really makes it a lot cleaner looking. Um, I mean, personally, I think the tattoo will hold up over time a little bit better just because it has those edges and it's so sharp. So I'm using a fiber round still pre-made. Um, the tube I'm using right now is also a next generation tube. I really like them. They're, they got nice tips. Uh, I'm using a round tip. Uh, I used to use diamond tips, but I tend to, to like these round tips. So you can see me, I'm using a, looks like magenta and purple mixed. Now it looks like a crimson red and light red mixed. Just kind of outlining those lips, making them sharp. Make sure I'm paying attention. Not, I mean, your stencil is important, but you also want to pay attention to the picture. And, you know, if the stencil is a little off, you, you're going to have to draw that shape. And so making sure the lips are the right shape and things like that. You know, you just don't want to just completely trust your stencil. It's there for guideline. And then you just kind of draw into it. It's there to help you. But it isn't, everything isn't always perfect. You just kind of want to look at it, eyeball it. Reference, use the reference a lot. That's what it's there for. You know, you, you really want to pay attention to what's going on there. You know, um, sometimes things that used to help me before when I was first starting to do these, um, I, you know, you buy a pack of Prisma colors and, you know, make a stencil, you know, with like a purple Prisma color on a piece of paper and, uh, you know, draw on it with the colors, match the colors, try to match it the night before you're going to start a piece like this. That way you can at least see, you know, uh, if you can do it, because if you can't do it on paper, you're not going to be able to do it on the skin. And that's kind of where you need to start is the drawing part. Um, yeah. So just try to mix your colors with the Prisma colors and, you know, draw a color portrait on paper before you try to attempt it on someone's skin. It's, it's really gonna, gonna help you a lot and your color combinations you're going to remember and, you know, it's, it's going to make it turn out a better piece. You know, even if you're dealing with a black and white portrait, uh, you know, the night before you do it and if it's your first ones, you know, take the time, you know, two, three hours, you know, and kind of just go ahead and rough in some values with, you know, your pencils and try to draw that portrait, you know, that'll give you an idea of what you need to work with and then it'll give you an idea if you're even able to do it or if you're ready. So right here, I went from, uh, you know, the tangerine and uh, Georgia peach mixed into, uh, and those are eternal colors. And then I, I use, uh, for the lighter colors, I use intense. And uh, that's a flesh pot that I'm going into, and then into a flesh, and then into white usually. So right here, I'm using a little bit of red, a little bit of water, and kind of fading it off black and grayish, you know, like just kind of using that uh, little bit of fade off. It looks like a little bit of tangerine and pink. Um, so yeah, it looks like light magenta, tangerine, and, uh, maybe Georgia peach into that pinkish area. Just following shapes, making sure I see where that, that upper lip, like cheek area is. Ended. So it looks like light magenta and, uh, flesh in there. Kind of getting that pinkish color. I'll use a lot of flesh, you know, to get things lighter. Sometimes I won't use as much white. Uh, if I use the flesh color, it tends to keep things a little bit, it lets things get lighter, but it doesn't let it get like the way white makes colors. Um, so that way when I use my white highlights, it, it tends to keep my white highlights pretty true to white, you know. I, I think it gives it a different life. So just getting those shapes in there. Going over the lip right here. A little bit of flesh pot. I like this color. It's really pinky. It's like kind of peachy color. Uh, it's a really good color. And it's such a good transition from like Georgia peach to that and then that into the regular flesh color. So I'll mix it down a lot depending on what it calls for. This one, you know, calls for a lot of reds and pinks in it, you know, but some some pictures, you know, you got to look for it. Sometimes they'll call for a lot of greens into those colors, things like that, blues, you know. You, you really want to pay attention to what you're looking at and uh, really making sure you're, you're following those colors that are there. So, yeah, just bringing it up to the warm spots, the highlight spots. 
make sure I'm getting lighter to where it looks like it's getting lighter on the picture. Right here I'm using uh, 17 again on the lip, kind of just using the edge, sketching those darker colors in there. Making sure I'm not covering my highlight areas, you know, where they need to be because those are important. Just kind of getting that tangerine in there. It's a good color off of red, so I suggest, you know, you get that color. It's, it's a really good color. It's kind of hard to find a color like that that goes off of red because red's a real hard color to use. So sometimes I'll make things a little darker, like right here, just in case uh, I want it to pop a little bit more, add a little bit of value to it. You know, right here I'm using a, uh, it's actually a 9 mag, but it fits in a 7 mag tube. It's a bug pin also. Um, I make these myself too. Uh, depending on what I need it for, I'll, I'll make them curved or straight. I actually like the straight ones a lot on these. I don't really curve them. It's a smaller mag. It. Uh, I like to use the edges. You know, it makes a little sharper edge. I can line with them if I need to. If I don't need that clean of a line. Um, yeah. So. I like them. There, it's it's a good it's a good needle. So right here, I'm using some red and just kind of sketching in that lip, making sure I'm following following those shapes and not changing the color too much. It looks like tangerine and that light red again. Uh, cleaning out my machine, it must not have been right, dark enough. Use a little bit of a crimson red. Okay, so now it looks like I'm going to start using a round. Okay, so now I'll go in and put some lines to add a little bit of texture into the lips, you know following the shape also making sure that the the round lines I'm putting are are curving with the shape of the lip that way uh you know I'm not doing just lines wherever they're actually moving with the way it's the way it's rounded and then I'll sharpen things up you know I'll go in there and add a little bit dark underneath the the lip and go a little bit darker and the same thing, you know, I use my my tattoo machine, like the coil machines, the same way. I, I've been ta I've been using those, you know, a little bit more than I have been using the pneumatics. But um, I do switch back and forth, you know. Uh, coil machines, you could do the same things with them and run them just as light, and you know, it's just a different tool. Like they do different things, and it's it's always good to have a little bit more, uh, a, a couple little things, you know, like different machines and they all help they all help they all do different things you know they, they they might teach you something you know i learned i learned a lot off of these machines and now i'm trying to use rotary machines and those have been working really well and just kind of testing things out and seeing what's going on you know seeing what's out there seeing what they do and maybe there's a purpose for them and things like that so now now what i do is i use my Aaron Kane for all my big shaded areas and I'll either use a pneumatic or if I'm on the road, I'll use a, a, a rotary machine. You know, I, I like the way they lay the lines in really consistent. I can turn them down super low and feather my lines out and just kind of make it softer. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you are looking to, to get, you know, the pneumas or something like that, I suggest it, but suggest it. But if you're looking to get, um, something close to that and close to the way they run, you know, I suggest, uh, a rotary machine you know they, they run really similar and uh, there's a bunch of brands out there I'd really look um, I, I'm not sure which ones I, I've used a couple but I'm not sure what I'm set on using uh, I'm still kind of filling those out and seeing how those go but yeah so right here it looks like I'm using a little bit of grayish like purple brown going a little bit darker under that nose. I usually like to go a little bit darker under the noses and a little bit darker around the noses sometimes, depending because those shapes sometimes don't uh, hold up really well. Um, a lot of times I'll bump it up, bump up the contrast around them in order to, to hold up the shape. And as you can see, I use a lot of line work around the nose. You know, it holds up the shape also on the edge of the nose, side of the nose, nostril. 
you know, and then sh- and then use my mag off of that to kind of hide that line. Like I said, you know, I'll take the value it is, make it a little bit lighter, and then make that line. And then take the color that it is, make it a little bit darker, and then go right next to it. So that way the line don't stand out that much. But make sure I'm thinking about it. It's all about choices, you know. You want to make choices and just be confident with them choices. Don't second guess it. Just kind of do it and then move on. You know, once it's there, it's there. There's not really much you can do until it heals. So just try not to get too frustrated and, you know, just keep going. So right here, I'm just kind of uh, making the shape right here above the lip. Make sure I'm paying attention to the way her face looks. And try not to go too dark, you know, knowing that I'm going to go right next to it with a lighter color. And usually I'll get like on a, you know, you kind of want to think about it. You want to think about, you know, the colors you're using and. And you get into a system, you know, where it's like, you know, you dip into this color and this to this color and you kind of get to where you're using that consistently through the whole thing. You kind of want to remember that you want to pay attention to what you're dipping in. You know, if you're dipping into, you know, like I am right here, you know, I'm using a lot of tangerine and, you know, the Georgia peach mix. Um, you know, you want to remember that combination. That way it's uniform through the piece. I mean, it may not be exactly perfect because it isn't a perfect mixture, but you want to know that that's what you've basically been using. Um, a lot of reds, a lot of, you know, but I, I have basis that I use. Like I use a lot of periwinkle. That's like my favorite color for these pieces. And uh, it's pretty much a color you can use in, off of, you could fade it into anything. It's good for any color. Works really well for your cooler areas. So right here, I'm just using some more Georgia peach. Looks like some light flesh, some white. I need a quick transition. You know, make sure your machine's rinsed out really well. You know, if your machine's not rinsed out really well, sometimes, you know, you'll be tattooing and, you know, the color you use will mix right into it and it's not the color you wanted. Um, you can see I'm using a lot more water right here with my ink. And just kind of fade it off. That way when I get the color over it, it just kind of just blends right into it. Really paying attention, looking at the picture a lot. You know, you don't want to you don't want to go too long without looking at your reference. It's really important you keep looking at it. That's what it's there for. You want to keep paying attention to what's going on. So just have fun with it. You know, it, it's really fun when you get to get a piece like this where you got to do the photography f- photography for it and, you know, you got to play around with their makeup or whatever. Uh, you get a, you get to kind of get the idea of where the piece is going to go on the body, you know, uh, the look the person's going to have. And it's really good. You know, it's really good if you can talk your customers into stuff like that and you're able to get a picture yourself because then you can get, you know, the dark areas where you want them and get more value and kind of play around you know it's your idea all the way through from the beginning to end it's not just you know this picture person someone brought in you know you you had fun with it so if you ever get a chance to do that you, you really should take advantage of it that's right it looks like i'm using a little bit of pink like a peach so a little bit of and like I said, I run my machine really light. So, you know, just say a value or something looks funny to me, you know, and I need to darken something up. Well, I haven't ran my machine too crazy hard. So I'll kind of turn my machine down a little bit lower, you know, just say it's a darker color I need. I'll make that darker color and then kind of hit that area real light, you know, back and forth motion, fading it in and out. You don't want to just bury it into the skin. If the skin's been hit, you're going to chew it up. You want to just kind of barely touch it and gradually hit it, you know. Um... I use a lot of ointment in the areas. You know, I'm not tattooing. Kind of helps my hand move around and, you know. Right here, I'm going to do some more black and purple. Uh, if you're wondering, like, uh, where I'm running this pneumatic machine, like what uh, PSI I'm using. Right here, I'm probably using about 25 to maybe 30 or maybe like 27 PSI. Uh, it runs real good like that's a good consistent uh you know feeling to me uh there's my my needles for the pneumatics are really shallow um right here i'm probably putting my needle out maybe i don't know a nickel's worth where with like uh you know a coil machine i'd be putting out a little bit further than that because i know it's going to back off 
Um, like I said, one of my favorite machines is an Aaron Kane. So let's just say I was using my Aaron Kane on this. I'd probably be running my Aaron Kane pretty soft to the hit. You know, it'd run consistent, but when I touch the skin, it kind of bogged down. You know, it wouldn't turn off, but it bogged down and be consistent still. So it just depends. I mean, I could give you volts and things like, or like, you know, the, the speed and stuff like that, but all machines are different. So I don't know. I would say my Aaron Kane itself, I would be running it around maybe eight volts, nine volts from around there. Um, but then like my Bloodhound liner, I'd probably be running it like at four volts, but the machine runs when it's super light. So it'd be running super, super soft. Um, but it's still running consistent. You know what I mean? It still has its sound. It's still holding up. It's, you know, it's like harmony, you know? Um, so yeah, so either way, you're going to be able to get this result. So yeah, I'm just kind of outlining the little strands of hair, making sure I leave gaps for the little highlights. Making You can see right there as I'm bringing that black line, I'm not bringing it all the way through because I'm going to stick some, some color above that to show a little bit of a, a little bit of light source, a little bit of, of shape there. And then I'll just kind of run some fast lines sometimes, you know, just kind of have fun, not be so stressed, just run a couple of little red lines there, just kind of give you the idea of what's going on there, not trying to be so perfect, giving the guy time to rest, move his arm right there, um, kind of explaining to him what's going on, let him know where I'm at. So, uh, yeah, so now I'm just kind of working around the nose. And yeah, don't stress like if your stencil, you know, is kind of fading off. Just make sure, you know, you got your the major points like the eyes or things like that aren't completely losing itself because, you know, that's when it gets scary. You don't want to wipe into those areas too much. You know, you lose that stencil, then you're going to have a little bit of trouble getting that lined up again or, you know, drawn on there right. It's going to be a little rough, a little stressful. So, yeah, I'm using a little bit of periwinkle right here in the background, kind of fading off, finding that shape. Now I'm using probably a little bit of brown and gray into the makeup. Make sure I'm paying attention to the way the shape is underneath the eye there. A um, little bit of purple and black, it looks like right here. So yeah, dark brown, light brown mixed right here, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and get into that little shadow area off of the red. Use a little bit of brown and purple. Just kind of sketch those shapes in there. Like I said, I don't go real solid right away. You know, I want to make sure that uh, I'm building it up, you know. It takes a little more time, but then result seems to come out a little bit more, more solid, you know. So right here I'm using actually, okay, so on the one side I used dark red. I used, uh, you know, like crimson uh, and then light, light, lighter red, uh, tangerine, Georgia peach, uh, flesh pot and flesh, and white. Okay, now I'm going into like an area that I'm going to make a little bit cooler because, you know, you want that contrast even if it isn't there. I'm using a little bit of dark brown, light brown, and then I'm using um, another color from Eternal. It's a uh, – it's called flesh tone. It's a great color. I use it for my cooler areas. I'll use that for my browns. And you can see it. Um, it's more of like a brownish, like purple color. I'll use that with like purples and things like that in order to create my shadow, light shadows. And um, I'm using that together with, uh, and then I'll go into like my flesh, regular flesh from that color into white. You know what I mean? Depending if how light it gets and how, how much, uh, how much, how much I need to put in there. How, depending on how light. So yeah, right here I'm using tangerine, making sure I pay attention not to cover that little highlight on the nose. There was a little dot there, you know, and, and that's really what's going to hold up shape on that nose and make it look 3D. So you want to make sure not to cover that. I kind of went around it. I'm using my 9 mag and just kind of sketching in that nose and making sure I'm following the shapes that, that I see there. So just you got you just got to be mindful of what you're doing and not, not rush it and really keep looking at your your reference so it looks like I'm using a lot of flesh tone right now 
It's a good color to mix with purple a lot, blues, pinks, things like that sometimes. So you can see I darkened up the edge of the nose right there. Sometimes I'll do that in order to create a little bit more contrast, a little bit where, where the two lights meet. Um, just depending on what I feel. Everything's about choices. You want to make choices, you know, and just keep moving on. Sometimes you'll wonder, oh, did I make that too dark or it's too dark or too light? You know, just kind of move on, man. Don't, don't worry about it. Just get it done and, you know, in the end, then you can see what, what it looks like as a whole. You know, sometimes things look weird when they're not completely finished. So you just want to keep going on. As long as it's close enough to your reference, then you're good. You know, people aren't going to really look at things like that. Your reference is always, isn't always going to be there. You know, people are going to look at the eyes, make sure the eyes are looking straight, make sure they're not cross-eyed. They're going to be looking at the shape of the nose, the lips, things like that, you know. They're never really going to pay attention too much if the value is slightly off. But it is very important. So just working on this cheek, you know, uh, bringing that dark red around there and tangerine. Make sure I'm paying attention to the way the cheek rolls around and, you know, not getting... Make sure I'm getting lighter, too, as I get closer to the nose, you know. Making sure I'm not making the value of the nose and and the cheek the same. Even though it looks like that in the picture, sometimes it's better if you kind of change things like that. Just so that way, you know, it holds a little bit more you know, 3D element to it. You know, you can play around. You're you're not only copying this thing, you're drawing it too, you know, so you can make any changes you think are important. Um, so yeah, I'm just using like a tangerine and creamsicle color right there or Georgia peach. Um, and just kind of working with that. Now I'm going to sketch some hair in just real quick, you know, just following the shape, making sure I'm not being too perfect on it, just kind of getting it in there and uh, having fun, you know, just not being too stressed on being perfectly precise you know as long as you get some of the direction and the shape there you'll, you'll be fine you know um i'm sure this guy's pretty sore by now it's probably been about four hours into the tattoo five hours into the tattoo something like that um Remember, this is sped up, you know, so it takes a little, you know, it's it's a pretty long tattoo. All right, so right here I'm using the five round, and I'm doing the bottom of the lid black. You know, I'm using, like, black and purple mixed and doing the bottom eyelid. Make sure I'm paying attention that it rolls around that eyeball and that, uh, you know, I'm following that shape. Um, the same thing on the top lid, rolling around. You know, the machine's running so light, I really don't make one straight line. I'll use a back-and-forth motion, circle motion, something like that. Um... And I'm just making those lines right there, kind of getting them in, trying to get them in there before, you know, the stencil wipes away on me. And, you know, this is where the stencil starts to go away. So you kind of start need working a little bit faster. But, you know, that's where that's where the drawing part comes in. Just in case your stencil wipes away, you know where to draw on these things and make it look right. That's why I say it's good to practice before, you know, you you do the tattoo if these are some of your first ones. Um yeah, so purple and black, I'm going to, you know, do that little circle inside of the eye and kind of fill it in. Making sure my machine's running real light, that way I can just kind of build it up in there. Get a little bit of red and kind of show the shape of that nose right there where the bridge is. Yeah, making sure I'm paying attention to the way the the, eye, the eyes round on the edge right there. You can see me kind of sculpting it out with a needle and uh, making it round. So I'm filling in the bottom lid right now, and it looks like black and purple. More black, it looks like. Um, I use a lot of triple black. Uh, I like that color a lot. It's really dark. I'm um, doing the top of the eyelid right there. It's a dark area, so I'll use you know a lot of black, a lot of purple, a lot of dark red. Thing like that, things like that in there. Um, five round works really well. It makes it really sharp depending on, you know, how big the portrait is. I mean, if the portrait was any smaller, I'd be using a three round. But 
you know, it's a pretty big porch. The eyes are pretty big. It lets me get away with using a five. Be a little bit cleaner. And plus, my machine's running really light, like I said. So the five's not really laying like a super thick five line in. It's, you know. So, okay. Right here on the eye. Okay, just say I use black. And um, now on the inside where it starts to get to the pupil, I'll use like, you know, purple and then I'll go to, you know, red and then or or brown or whatever the eye color is and then I'll go to the lighter color. Right now I'm just kind of blocking them in there. As you can see the stencil starting to wipe away. Well, it's been hours. Uh so yeah, I'm just kind of trying to get those shapes in there so that way I don't lose them. You know, it's really important that the the eyes are in the right area, so I'm going in there, and you can see like the like the eyelids are thick, so I'm making them thick. You know, I'm following the the, the the how thick the eyelids look, and paying attention to where the highlights are and the darks are. So I'm just outlining my darks, doing what I, what I see there. You know, everyone's gonna see things a little bit different. So you know, two people could do the same pieces, and it's never gonna look the same. So you just gotta make your choice. That's where that's where it comes in. All your choices, and uh, being confident with your choices. You know, and drawing, like I said, you know, drawing these pieces before you attempt to do them. It's important, you know, really taking the time out. That's what that's what's going to set people apart is taking the time out to draw these pieces beforehand, because then you, you'll have more of an understanding. You know, you can do it. And then if you made any mistakes or if you didn't like something you did, then, you know, you can you can change that when you tattoo it and then you don't make those mistakes. Uh yeah, so I'm just kind of getting those real dark areas in, um, fading it off, and just kind of getting those shapes in there, making sure the eyes are looking at you, making sure they're not cross-eyed. See, even right now, though, like if they were a little cross-eyed, then I could take a little bit of black or a little bit of purple and kind of adjust them, you know, and not really trip out on how perfect it is. You can you can always adjust. So right here, there was a little highlight. There, if you look in the picture close enough, there's a highlight right there, a little tangerine highlight that was – it was from the red light that was – glistening pretty well in her eyes so i'll go in there and I'll, I'll knock those in there since they're not white and then it looks like there was a little blue highlight in there so then i'll go and knock that in there so that way that stencil and that that where, where it, it sits exactly isn't gone okay so now i'm taking like a dark red and running it right next to the eyelid right underneath it so that way it's not such a hard bold heavy line it kind of softens up it's a value a little bit lighter than the black and it's just kind of right there on that edge. It'll kind of soften up that edge, not make it so crisp, and, and kind of make it more believable, more real. Not so graphic, like black, you know. Um, yeah, so now I'm using my mag again. I'm kind of going through and following that shape of that, that bottom of the eye. Really paying attention to where my darks are. Really paying attention not to go out too far. And just taking my time, you know. Patience counts for a lot, you know, when you're doing a piece like this. Um, well, in anything. And patience, you know, counts for a lot. So you're really trying not to rush through it, trying to pay attention to what you're doing and just going at your speed. If you're fast, you're fast. If you're slow, you're slow. Just, you know, be confident with your choices. You know, if it starts to get too dirty, like right there, like I started to see too much, you know, stuff all over. I couldn't see the whole piece. I, I clean it off, you know, and then I look at it. Um, right here, it looks like I'm using some Bactine. Uh, he must be a little sore, so... I'll go ahead and lay out some Bactine, and it'll kind of help him out with this soreness. Bactine's a great thing. You can find it at, like, Walmart or, you know, Walgreens, Target, wherever like that, and it works works really well. Um, you know, spray it. You don't want to get it on the stencil. The stencil will wipe away. You just get it in the opened areas, you know. It'll help your customer out and give them that extra edge of sitting a little longer. Um, yeah, so I'm using a little bit of Periwinkle. Okay, so now we're getting to a cooler area of the face. Okay, right here where the makeup is, you can see a lot of blues, a lot of purples. Um, I'll enhance those, you know. If I see a little bit, sometimes I'll bump it up, you know. Trying not to change the value too much, but sometimes, you know, I do. Barely a hair. You don't ever want to go too far off. Um, so right here I'm using a little bit of purple, a little bit of brown. Uh, and just kind of knock it in those areas around the socket of the eye. Uh, making sure that you're thinking about things, you know, when you're, when you're doing a piece like this, you really want to think about shapes, you know, and what, what, what it's made of, you know, not only the stencil and not only like, you know, what the face is like, knowing that there's, you know, 
that there's bone underneath and that there's muscle structure and bone structure and that you're really working into the socket of the eye and that's why the eye is sitting like that and thinking deeper than than what's just there you know not just following exactly what's there but but really thinking about what's going on you know and and what things are made of and you know and then that comes up with other things you know and you know, especially with like the color choices too, like making sure you're, you're, is that a shadow or isn't that a shadow? Is there light hitting there? Is there not light hitting there? What color is this light? Things like that. You know, you really want to think about it. You don't want to just uh, do it because it's there. You want, you want to make sure you understand why it's there or what's going on. And uh, that's really important. That's going to help you evolve. It's going to come up with more questions and then you're going to come up with more answers, you know, and if you don't know the answer, then you ask somebody, that, you know, hey, you know, why is this like this or um and usually you know people will give you the the answer that they have if they don't know how to answer it they won't but it's important to keep asking questions it'll make you grow so i'm really following the cheekbone right here above and i really paying attention to those shapes that are on the face and uh, still using that back and forth motion you know um Going right into uh, what I did a little while ago, using a couple little dark, dark colors. So it looks like I'm going to use some uh, bright red right now, and go right off into that cheek. You know, you can see that cheekbone, just the way it rolls around right there. You know, and really paying attention. So you want you want to use that, and, and really know what what's there, and that's what's going to hold up the shape of the face. You know, if it looks right, if it looks wrong. So I'm rinsing my machine out a little bit. Cleaning this off. I don't know what he was telling me. He's probably telling me how to do my job. But it's all right. Yeah, so I use a little bit of light, light brown, purple for this side of the face. Remember I was talking about that earlier. I'll use it, you know, I'll purposely make this side a little bit cooler than the other side just to add that little bit of contrast and not really use the same colors you know I want to change up the colors you know so right here on the cheek it's a little bit warmer still using that uh, Georgia peach and uh, tangerine color and like right here like you can see where where the top cheekbone and the jaw is you know I'm breaking that in half right there how it falls in. And even though that shapes there a little bit, sometimes I'll, I'll knock it up a little bit more. And just following that shape there. Lightening it up as I go. You could actually see it in the picture a little bit more than you can see it on the, on the, on the way it's videotaped right now. Um, there's a major glare right there, so you really can't see that little cheekbone that was sitting there. But but it was there, and I might have enhanced it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, still going off of it, you know. See, sometimes it isn't the right color. It wasn't, you know, light enough. So now I'm going in and had to change the color a little bit. Still using that back and forth motion and circles. Just when I want to get it solid, if I know it's the right color, it's the right shape, go from there, you know. Not being afraid to dip, you know, not being afraid to play with my color. You know, really trying to look for that color. So yeah, right here it was mixed, a little bit of flesh pot and a little bit of flesh. Going into that, making that solid, bringing it out to my highlights, you know, where the white is. So you can see the shape of the cheek, the shape of the jaw there. Really thinking about these things, you know. See so a little bit of white, a little bit of flesh. Going underneath that gradually, you know, just taking my time, making it a slowly transition into each other you know it's not real rushed real rough 
Come on, take your time. And throw a little bit of white on the bottom of that jaw. Make it contrast against that shadow that's underneath it. Just looking at the reference, you know. So right here, it looks like I'm probably using almost straight white now. With a little bit of flesh. Like, if I would have rinsed almost all my flesh out and then just went into the white. You know? Clean rinse cup, too, you know? You want to think about that, you know? Like, right now, my rinse cups are pretty dirty. It probably helped me out if I would have changed them out a little bit. But um, sometimes, you know, if, you know, your colors aren't coming out true no more, it's because your rinse cups, you know? Go get some new rinse cups. Throw those ones away and put some new ones out. So right here, okay, the stencil's starting to wipe away. Um, I need to block things in. So I'll go in there with my darks, and I'll just start knocking in the hair, following the shape. You know, like I said, things don't got to be perfect. You can eyeball it. It's not like someone's going to look at it and be like, this strand isn't right or anything like that. Just got to go in there and have fun and just kind of get that stuff in there. You know, sometimes a stencil won't last forever. You know, you've been wiping this thing for, you know, four, five hours, depending on how long you're going, and it just starts to wipe away. And that's where you got to be comfortable with drawing it and just kind of getting it in there. And that's why I say it's important for you to draw these pieces in order for you to understand and, and to gain confidence, you know, because then you're not going to stress out. You're not going to freak out. You know, just say you're having trouble with color, you know, and you're not sure, like, what colors to use or what's warm, what's cool, you know. It's important, you know, go buy, go buy a color wheel, play with it, you know, read it and, you know, or take a little class, you know, on, on color just to kind of teach you a little bit. Or ask somebody that you know that knows about it. You know? It'll help you a lot with these pieces too. So just outlining this. It looks like I'm using like a black up here. It looked like I used some dark red. Um, just following the shape. You know, these are quick lines. These are going to be covered with my mag. So it's not anything really crazy. Um, just kind of sketching them in, you know? And right here, this is what I use, a little five. And I'll just kind of sketch in those eyebrows. You know, just kind of follow that shape. You know, it looks like I'm using probably like a purple and a black, maybe some dark red. Just following those shapes, making it real simple, not too crazy, you know. You know, not trying to make every hair, everything perfect, just kind of getting it in there, get the idea there, and that's it. Move on. You don't want to sit there and think too much, you just kind of want to do it and and move on. So yeah, just kind of sketching these lines in there. So I don't want to lose these shapes. Or lose the direction of the hair. You know, a lot of that stuff's important. So yeah, just playing with it. Now I can wipe it all down and clean it off, you know, not really worry about what I'm going to lose, you know, because the rest of it I'll just eyeball. You can see it a little bit there, but, you know, but everything's there, you know, where the eyebrow is. I know where to go off of the color now. And, you know, that's another thing is be careful with, you know, on how hard your, your ink, you know, gets on top. Sometimes you can tend to bend your needles, you know, if you hit it too hard and if it's dried up. Make sure you're paying attention to take those hard pieces off. So right here in the temple, I had seen a little bit of blue. So, you know, I kind of bumped it up, kind of laid out some blue. This guy's starting to get pretty sore. You know, it's probably pretty deep into the session. So I'll just lay it out, you know, just say I need a second pass and I'll go through it. So I'll use that blue and then I'll take that brown right next to it. You know, it depends on what I see in the picture. But yeah, that's what I see. So that's what I did. And uh, I'll bump it up, you know. I have fun with it, like I said before. It's it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be close and kind of get the idea and feeling of the piece and get it down, you know. So using some dark brown here into the eyebrow, um, and off of the right there, off of the around the eye. And just kind of fading it into that periwinkle purple that I laid down earlier. Um, now I'm just kind of, you know, the guy's pretty sore. So I'm going to kind of get get him in there and get it done. And so I'm just kind of going through and sketching in the forehead and using that back and forth motion into the, into the brown. 
running my machine super light, building it, you know. So, you know, I'll use a lot of like, sometimes I'll cross hatch like I just did right there. Side to side and then I'll go up and down. So then I'm going right here and creating this shadow here using the purple. You know, it looks like a light purple and blue. And then uh, just kind of laying that out. And then it's in some periwinkle, you know. I mean, maybe it's a little bit lighter than it should have been, but maybe not. Maybe pretty close. But it's all right. As I work more on this, you know, um, you know, I, I look at the shapes and stuff, but you also want to pay attention to that brow bone, you know, that's going on right there above her forehead, making sure you're following that and making sure it's the right shape there. Like I was saying earlier, you know, you want to think about what's underneath and what it's made up of. And sometimes things are made too smooth, you know, or too like flat and just kind of falls flat and doesn't look right. So right there, I see a little, you know, like all my stencils gone. I need to knock in where that, uh, that highlight is. So I'll just take my mag like that and kind of go right around where the highlight is. So that way I don't lose it, you know, and then I'll fade all the, fade all the colors into that. So see, that's the, like, if I was going to do two sessions, the whole tattoo would look like the way that forehead is. I'd knock it all in like that. And then I'd let it heal and then they'd come back and then I'd, you know, just do the rest. But since this is a one session tattoo, you know, it's pretty much all finished. Um, but the stencil is wiping away, so I knock it in there real quick. And then it le allows me to put some Bactine or whatever it is to help him out and let it get, lets him get through the session a little bit longer, you know, lets him sit there a little longer and take a little bit more of the, the pain, you know. Um, I'm also always concerned with the comfort of the customer, you know. You always want to make sure they're all right, that they're comfortable, make sure that they're feeling good if they need water, you know, things like that. It's going to help them get through a session like this, you know, if you're looking to do really long sessions, um, you know, the kind of music you're playing, things like that. You know, if you're listening to some aggressive music, it might make them feel uncomfortable. A lot of times I'll let my customer listen to some uh, comfortable music. That way they can, you know, uh, whatever they choose or, you know, kind of help them out like that. Or, you know, compromise, do some of my music, some of their music. But, you know, that way they're comfortable. It's going to help you. So right here I'm using some, uh, looks like some purple and some brown. And just kind of getting in around that eye. So that I think, I think that purple, that light purple is actually grape. Let me see, yeah it is, it's like grape from Intense. So I'm using, uh, looks like that I'm not sure exactly what colors that, that was. It was creamsicle and, or Georgia peach, I think, and like light magenta. So right here I'm using like some dark brown. Just kind of getting in that shape of that eye. Using some periwinkle in there, maybe some gray with that. Making sure I'm paying attention to my reference still. You know, like if you use purple and light blue, sometimes it makes this really cool, like a uh, weird light purple. I use it a lot. It's a nice color. So then I'll darken things up. Like I said earlier, you know, if something isn't dark enough and I haven't hit the skin that much, then I'll go in there and darken it after, you know, kind of hit it real quick, real light, back and forth motion, just kind of go into it. Um... You know, some of you are probably wondering, I'm doing some black here and I'm wiping right into those light colors. Um, I've been running my machines pretty light the whole time. So, you know, it's not like it's like crazy traumatized and got like a bunch of, you know, crazy holes there. So I'm wiping into it and it's not wiping into the skin because there's not it's not real. It's still pretty. It's still pretty like. What do you call it? Um, sealed. It's not like all these crazy open holes, you know, I'm running my machines real light, so it's not really wiping into it. Um, I noticed the more I work the skin and 
the more I damage it, the easier it is for me to wipe those colors into it. Uh, you just want to run your machines light and kind of get through it. You're going to have more trouble if, you know, you might run the machines too hard. This is just my own thing, you know. This is kind of, I don't know if it's true that I'm just running, running it too light and, you know, it's not wiping in. But that's just kind of what I've noticed on doing this. So I'm using the reds and on the same sides again. And, you know, just say I mudded up a color too much and I'm not liking the color too much of what I've made because I've dipped in it too much and used so many different colors. Um, I'll put it out again, you know, I'll put another cap out and I'll put it out again. A lot of, you know, a lot of times I did it and in the end result, I wasn't happy with it. It was the color was a little muddy. It didn't stay consistent. You know, take the time, you know, take your gloves off and put that color out. Or, you know, I'll put a couple of those colors out and one's just to get muddy and then the other one's just to keep clean and the other one's just for warm and the other one's just for cool. It just depends, you know, on, on what I'm feeling. But it's always good to put, if you know you're going to use that color a lot, put a multiples out. That way you can keep one clean. So here I'm using that tangerine. I use that a lot in here. Um, using this uh, 9 mag again, running it pretty soft. The back and forth motion. You know, fading it off into that other stuff. Really helped me that I put that highlight there because it probably would have been a little off if I wouldn't have uh, laid it out before the stencil was gone. So using a little bit of back teen, helping this guy out a little bit, trying to get through this session. Rinsing my machines out. That's really important. You want to make sure you rinse all that out. So I'm looking at flesh tone. I'm using that flesh tone from uh, Eternal on the edge of that nose right there. Flesh tone, purple, and it looks like Georgia Peach together. Uh, giving me that light little purple color that I needed. Real soft. Um, following the shape of that nostril. You know, uh, using that back and forth motion over the, some of the stuff that I had already hit. Real light. Um... See, so real skimming the skin real quick, you know, nothing real crazy, just soft. So it gets hard. Take the ticket off. Um, this looks like it's a flesh pot mixed with the same colors I had. I didn't rinse my I didn't rinse my machine all the way out. That way it goes into it smoothly. Making sure I'm paying attention still to the reference. I haven't stuck hardly any white in this straight, so like I said, I'll usually wait for that, you know, rinse my machines out really well and then and then do that white at the very end. Um, still getting the shape of the eyes in here. Just taking my time, you know, making things are right, making sure things are right. So just putting that light red is, you know, the you got to think about that, too. Like the light's coming from the bottom right there. That's going to hit the bottom of the lids. It's going to get darker on the cheek right there on the top and then come back around down and get lighter. So you just want to pay attention to that. Even though the picture's there, just say the picture doesn't have much value. You have to add a little bit more than then it's important to know those things and think about it, not just follow exactly what you're doing. So right here I'm going with the with the liner again after I shade it over a little bit using a little bit of black and purple, making those little making those eyebrows a little bit darker, a little bit more defined. Kind of following the direction of the the way they're going, you know. You want to follow those lines in the right direction. Right here it looks like I needed a little bit darker, darker edge, so I'll go through with go through it and kind of make it a little bit darker. You know, using my five round a lot, making sure it's running really light like a shader. That way I can use it for details like that and just kind of shade with it really quick. Just clean it off really good with Bactine. Letting it sit there on him. You know, kind of let it soak into the skin. It'll kind of help him with the soreness. You know, let him sit a little bit longer. Using a little bit of blue and white. And the, probably the side of the nose right there, I see a little bit of blue. So trying to get that color close. You know, make sure I'm getting lighter with the value.
kind of see it in a couple spots. So I'll move that color around, put it a couple different places. You know, if I see it a little bit, I'll just throw it in there, even though it's a little bit more enhanced. And just say I don't like it, then I let it heal and I go back through it. You know what I mean? I lighten it up a little bit more, knock it down. You know, it's not that crazy. If you can get a second sitting on it, it's perfect. Let you adjust some things that you maybe weren't sure of, you know. But at least it's in there. And you made a decision, you know. So just kind of finishing up that cheekbone. Cheek area. Using some, some flesh pot, it looks like, and some Georgia peach. And a little bit of blue. You know, I see it transition a little bit. Getting that temple area in there. And lighting up as I come up to the to the hottest spots on on that side of the face. Where it needs white. Now you can see I put multiple whites out. That way I can mix some flesh tone into one, some blue into one. You know, if the, the same one I'd use blue and I'd use purple, you know, other colors like that. Um, but making sure I use that, I have at least one pure white out just in case I need to put it out. You know, it's going to keep it more clean. And right here, using some more Bactine. You know, I'll use it a lot throughout the whole tattoo. It's got a little bit of lidocaine in it. It helps the tattoo out a little bit and numbs it up. So you can see it up close. It's a little bit of brown. Getting this area in there, a little bit of purple. Looks like I needed to darken it up a little bit, so I'm going through and kind of just darkening it up. I had a lot of fun on this piece. This piece was really cool to do. It was different than a lot of pieces I, I end up doing. You know, a lot of the reds and stuff like that. It was it was interesting. You know, it was a little bigger than I used to usually get to do the face. So I got to get a little have a little bit more fun with the eyes and a little bit more detail than uh you know I'm able to put sometimes. So I'm using some dark brown, just kind of getting in the, the forehead. This guy's probably starting to hurt, so I'm probably starting to move a little bit faster, trying to get him him done, you know. That's always something with tattooing, you know. I mean, the client is also, it's not like you could just sit there and, you know, you draw on it as long as you wanted to. I mean, you're kind of pressured because, you know, if the client's in too much pain or they can't handle it, then you're not able to to sit there as long as you like. So, you know, sometimes you kind of got to get through some areas and, and get it fast and get the shapes in there real fast and then wait for your second session, you know, and then adjust what you need to adjust. Well, that's what makes it kind of great, you know. You, you're on this time limit and, and you are pressured and kind of makes it what it is, you know. So just kind of lightening up in the in the values where I'm going, kind of moving kind of faster, you know, trying to get through these areas, but still following the shape, you know, still paying attention to what's going on, still paying attention to, you know, the values and where my where my highlights are. Okay, so now I'm softening up that place where I went to earlier and using like a little bit of a tangerine and, you know, maybe a flesh pot lining up right there. You know, you can see how it changed. You know, I didn't hit it real hard, so it was easy to go ahead and go through and soften up. So little by little, you know, this piece is coming together. And, and like I said before, I think this piece was like something like seven, eight hours long, somewhere around there. Um, one sitting. And just taking my time with it. Just kind of following that, the way that that brow bone is that's why I made that little little shape right there 
You can see it in the picture. And there was times before I used to smooth that out, but you know, the forehead would come flat and it's good to, uh, to make sure you're paying attention to that, to the way those shapes are, you know, it's going to add a different look to your piece and it's going to help it a lot. And the piece next to it, you know, you see, you see kind of quick glimpses of it. That's one pass also, you know, that's one pass with a coil machine and, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, probably needs a little bit more work, but, but, you know, you can see there's, there's hardly any difference. You know, the reference wasn't as good. Obviously it was off the internet. Um, but it was, it was, you know, you could, you could do the same things with your regular magnetic coil machines. I love them. Like I said before, like I still use them. So right here on the eye, I'm going from the darkest to the lightest inside towards the pupil. Uh, I'm probably using a dark purple and then I go into brown. I'm making sure not to not to go into those highlights that I laid out earlier. Uh, remember I was telling you I put that blue and that tangerine color in there. Really paying attention to, to not to hit those because um, those are going to give it a little bit more life, a little bit more uh, understanding of what's going on around it. You know, if you're not sure sometimes, like, what color your shadows are, look in the background. A lot of times your background, you know, make up the, the shadows in your foreground. You know, it's you got to make it believable, you know, and what's going on around you. You know, you're made up of all the colors around you. So you really want to pay attention to that with your reference. Looking more into it than just the foreground or just the picture of the person's face. The color around it's really going to make it what it is, you know. If you're next to a green wall, you know, your face is probably going to be a little bit greener. You know, if you're next to a blue wall, there's going to be a little bit more blue in the face. You know, um, and usually it's in your shadows. It's a lot in the shadows. Uh, that's at least just what I've noticed, you know, with looking at pictures all the time. Um, so, yeah, like I'll take lines right up to the next of the next of the black of the eyes, like, like I am right now, and using like, you know, uh, magenta red, you know, into it. And, you know, I'm really really having fun with these eyes, really just running my machine super slow and building up those eyeballs, you know, so that way I can shade with it. That way it isn't just, just a line. It's like a soft hit and I'm shading with it, you know. So now the eyes are starting to come to life, starting to have some fun, doing a little bit of purple, you know, doing a little bit right underneath, right underneath that eye ball and between the lid and the eye little bit of blue this I use a lot of this blue you know one side of the eye is a little bit cooler than the other so I make sure to pay attention to that there's a little bit more blue on you know the left side of the eye than there is on the right I don't want to use any blue so I go through I kind of hit it real quick real soft you know hit both sides of the eyes you can see it and then on the opposite of the opposite uh, side of the eye on the you know on the right side I'll use probably a little bit of a uh, magenta kind of fade that off because that's where the, the red light's hitting. As you can see, it's changing the way that the look of the face is. It's making those eyes more believable. And kind of bringing the colors that are around it on the skin into it too. So just kind of going in and adjusting things that I see that are should be adjusted and, you know, cleaning things off, seeing what it looks like after I get things in there. I haven't done no highlights in it. You know, you see I left the, the little spot on the nose, side of the nose. There's still spots in the eyes that need white highlights. I haven't done them yet. I'll do those at the very end. So now I'm just going to go through and start start knocking the hair in, you know. Start doing this dark brown and dark red and getting all those shapes in there, you know. Yeah, still following the, you know, the flow of the hair and making sure I'm paying attention to that. Hair's a hard thing, you know. I still have a lot of trouble with hair. Um, a lot of it's just taking the time and paying attention to it, uh, you know. But but it is a hard thing. A lot of people don't want to take the time to make it look right, and it, it you know, 
I fall in that category too. You know, sometimes I just can't sit there and make the hair look perfect. It's just too, too much work sometimes, but it really counts for a lot. If you can, it'll look really good. So yeah, just getting these lighter like browns in there and you know, reds and just kind of following what I see there and paying attention to what's going on and Yeah, so using a little bit more Bactine just to help him out. Kind of, you know, has lidocaine in it, help it numb up a little bit, take that edge off, gives me a few more minutes just to, uh, you know, work on him. Just going back through and putting that red where it needs to be and using more just a straight dark red instead of so much purple into it. And, you know, I already laid out a lot of the darks and still following that shape and the way the hair is flowing, you know coming off the tips of of those little corners where, where the skin's showing through. Um, yeah, just still following that shape, working on it. I'm going to be working on the hair for a little bit, you know, kind of doing the same thing. Um, you know, like I said, you know, draw, it all comes from drawing. So you really need to sit down and, and mess with colored pencils before you attempt these things. You know, uh, really play around with the colors and, and kind of see maybe pick some colors that are close to the colors that you use in your tattoos and and just kind of mix them up see what they do you know uh, a lot of times you know if I'm looking for a color in a piece like this before I start you know I'll kind of put one drop on one one finger of the glove and then one drop on my thumb and mix them together and see see what the color looks like before I even uh, mix it in my tube before the, I do the tattoo just because uh, it'll give me an idea of what those two colors are gonna make um, you know, really, really break down the piece, you know, and, and really study the colors up close. So, you, you know, another thing I'll do is I'll take the reference photo and just kind of look at it for a good couple minutes, you know, five minutes and just, just kind of stare around. Don't look at it as a face, you know, kind of stare around and look at what colors there is. You know, right here, I'm, I'm blocking in the background of uh, behind the hair. And, and, you know, you could see it in the picture. It's, it's, it's a little blue. And I'll go in there and, and I'll punch it up a little bit more blue. You'll see in a little bit uh, when I get more into it that uh, I'll stick a little bit brighter blue back there just to, to make it enhance. It'll be more like the brighter blue that I stuck in the face. I kind of like to choose the pictures, like the the colors that's in the picture, you know, just so that way I can bring my foreground and background together. Um, it's good good to bring that together. It's going to tell the right story. It's, it's going to make it believable. Um, so I'm working up here in near the armpit, kind of fading off the hair and sticking some some black and purple here and just kind of following that shape again. You know, I probably won't go up that high. I don't want to want to go up that high. I'll just kind of fade it off. Um, but yeah, th these these are pretty quick areas. I'll just kind of go in there and put the idea of what I see and, and fade it off, you know. You know, still using that back and forth motion. You know, I've learned a lot of little things just over the years of doing these, I've done a few and, you know, like the line work we were talking about earlier and I, I use a lot more than I used to and, uh, it really helps hold up over time and just really helps it look a lot more sharper and crisper and cleaner, um, than, than just using the edge of the mag, you know, I'll, I'll use the edge of the mag for places like this, like the hair, just to give a softer edge, you know, and kind of, kind of fade it off. It kind of blurs it out a little bit and doesn't make it look as sharp. Um, but then in the areas where I want it to be sharper, I'll take that liner and just kind of cut that color through and then I'll, you know, if it really needs to be sharp, then I'll cut the, the colors right next to it and just shade with my liner and make it real, real sharp area. Um, so on this side of the hair, there's, a, it's a little bit cooler. So I'm using a little bit more periwinkle, a little bit more purples on that side where it falls into the other color and to the other light source. Um, just contrasting, you know, the two sides. Uh, right here, I'm just blocking it in, blocking it up on the top. It's probably about, I probably won't end up going up too much higher. I'm just going to kind of fade it off. But, um, you know, I play with the background. I play with these things, just kind of fade it off, make it look smooth and clean, just make it work with the area. You know, like I said, everything doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of have fun. Most people aren't going to look at that area anyways, you know. It's good to keep it clean, but... They're going to look at the, the eyes and nose and lips and things like that. 
So it's good to pay attention to the detail in there a lot of times. So, yeah, I mean, the more you do, the, the better you're going to get at them, you know. Uh, the more you draw, the better you're going to get at them. So if you, you have the chance to, to do them, you know, take it, do it. Just make sure that uh, it's a time to do it, you know. Don't don't jump don't jump ahead of yourself, you know. I did a bunch of black and gray portraits before I even attempted the color portraits. You know, it really helped me uh show value, you know. And uh it really helped. And, and you can see right here I'm I'm doing a little bit more periwinkle and it's gonna come to light blue and just kind of enhancing that area a little bit more. And jumping around a little bit, just kinda getting things in there, bringing colors around. So I don't I don't spend too much time in this area right now. You know, this guy's probably hurting and just trying to get through it. And, you know, if we need to, if it doesn't look right all the way, you know, we'll take a, another session on the on the hair and kind of detail out a little bit more. But uh, not trying to rush it to the point where I'm making mistakes, just taking it to the point where, you know, it looks right. And if it needs a second pass, I can go through it, you know, making sure to clean it off and looking at it, you know, compared to the reference. Things like that. I still haven't used any white. Uh, we'll go over white when I start going through that and, you know, the importance of that. But, um, you know, I use a lot of back and forth motion. I use my, my mag sideways, just kind of bringing it back and forth. You know, in the hair, I'll use a lot of Y shapes in order to to make it look right. I don't use them just straight. You know, uh, when I first started doing these things... Um, you know, to practice, I draw, like I said, too. And once you get that down, you know, you're going to have to find a client to do it. Uh, you know, I, I'd work on friends, you know, I'd hook them up and be like, hey, you know, I know I can do this. I'd show them the drawing I did. And, you know, and, and a lot of times they trust me if I could draw it, you know, so that, that kind of gets you started, you know. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the tattoos I did for myself to, to learn, um, a lot of time people won't give you the chance to do it. So, you know, friend, that's where friends are. People like that that trust you, you know, they'll give you the chance and, you know, you'll, you'll learn a lot from it. So it's, it's worth that, you know, it's worth it to take the extra time and, you know, sometimes on your day off it takes it, you know, and you go into work and you do a piece for yourself and a piece for them that you're going to learn. Take that extra time to, to really sit down and learn from that piece. It's worth it. I, I did it a bunch of times, you know. And, and I've talked to an, uh, a number of other artists that they've even told me in the beginning, you know, when they started doing whatever it is they're doing, that they would practice on their friends and, you know, hook them up, you know, maybe just have them pay for the material or whatever, just in case, you know, because you're practicing and go into it a few times. It's worth it. You know, I don't know how many pieces I did on my friends like this until people actually started seeing it and then it started working responding and they wanted they wanted me to do a piece like that and they'd pay me you know whatever it was you know that I was charging for it and it really helped me in the long run you know it was a little few extra hours maybe I didn't want to go to work that day or whatever but it really helped me out so yeah I'm just laying in some red right now just kind of laying this all out kind of just following the directions there it looks like it should have been a little bit darker in some areas but like I said it's if it needs a second pass, pass it needs a second pass. You know, just kind of getting these 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 colors there. You know, like you see, there's a white shape right there I use in the hair. Um, you make sure you stretch the skin too. You know, that skin up there was a little bit, a little bit rough. You know, it was a real rubbery and needed to stretch it a lot. You know, and you know sometimes it doesn't go in as quick and as easy as you want it, but you know. Just got to stretch it real well and get it going. And, you know, another thing, too, is these are just the way I do my things, you know. And, you know, if you think uh, there's an easier way, you know, try it. And a lot of these things were trial and error, you know. I, I would try something and it didn't work for me. You know, it, it took a couple, a couple of tries to make it right or make it 
what I figured it out, like with the line work, you know, I used to use a mag and make the lines with my mags around certain things. And then it took me to take the liner and do that. You know, you might have an idea that might make something better, you know, try it out, you know, don't be afraid to try things. Just make sure that it's thought out and that, you know, you, you could fix it, you know, if, if it is something that might not work, you know, but it's going to take that. It's going to take those, those mistakes to learn, you know, and like I was saying earlier on pieces like this, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, it, I mean, it's, it got to be close to the picture and everything like that. You know, it has to have likeness, things like that. But that's the thing. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be perfect. You're just trying to find the just and the feeling and emotion of the picture. So if you're following the colors and getting pretty close and the value and just making it, making the shapes right. And they're close enough. It's going to look like the person. It's going to have that feeling, you know, you, you shouldn't stress on being too perfect. It, it, it'll waste too much of your time and, it's just not going to be worth it. You, you really want to just kind of have fun with it and, you know, it's a learning experience. You know, you're never, you're not going to be able to do this the first time. You're going to, it's going to take a few times and then you're going to find your own little tricks and, you know, but if you can draw it, you can tattoo it. I mean, that's with anything. If, if you can draw it, you can tattoo it. There's no difference there. That's one of the things that a lot of people forget is that, yeah, you're dealing with needles and, and it's permanent, you know, and there's not there's not an eraser or anything. But if you can draw it, you know, you can tattoo it. And, and that's just how it is. It's, it's as simple as that. You just got to you just got to throw everything out the window and be like, you know what, I'm going to attempt this like I'm going to draw it and and do it, you know. Do it the way you would draw it. You know, I'm just kind of blocking it in. You can see it really coming and developing now. You can see it really getting getting close to being done, you know. Now I'm just kind of sketching in the background of the hair right there, you know, not spending too much time. A lot of time it's good, too, like to leave that kind of stuff loose. You know, it's gonna, it's not going to take too much attention away from the face. You know, you got to make decisions like that. Like, like I said, I made decisions where I was going to outline and make it crisper, and I made decisions where it was going to be a little bit loose. And sometimes, you know, top of the heads, you know, necks, clothing – you know, it's nice to be able to make it, you know, perfect, but sometimes it's good to, to kind of make it a little bit uh, simpler, you know, kind of simplify it and it's going to work well because then your eyes are going to draw more towards the sharper areas. You know, so like right here, like I was telling you earlier, I'm bumping up the blue, you know, making it a little bit brighter, fading it off, you know, but you can see that blue and those colors are throughout the face. It's in the makeup. It's on the other side of the head. It's going to bring your eye all the way through the piece. It's going to look right. You got to think about these things. Background and foreground, you know, need to work together. You know, just fading things off, making it look clean. Those few extra minutes will make it look a little bit cleaner. And, and there's still work to be tied in and stuff like that, but, you know, it's close enough and... Just, just just in case you just say you don't see that client again, you got to make it look a little clean. Just say they move or they flew in or, you know, they're from far or something. You won't see them for a while. Yeah, so now I'm using the tangerine and all these little highlighted areas in the in the hair. Uh, probably tangerine and maybe, maybe orange in some areas, maybe some pink, depending on, on what I see. But... Um, yeah, it's a really good highlight color right here. It's a it's like a perfect mix of like red, orange, and pink. It's a really nice color. And I use it a lot of a lot of in my blood and stuff. And you know, I usually usually used to just stop it at red, but with this color, I've really it's really given me a lot more to play with and get it a little bit lighter value in there. But see all this skin that I left open, the little gaps I kind of go through and kind of making those little those little strands finished. And now you can see like through the neck, like when you look at it, you know, like what I was talking about with the shadowed areas, like the purples in the neck and things like that, you know, really creating like, you know, that chin to pop out, you know, keeping that chin real true and warm and then dropping back underneath where that chin is in the neck, you know, and just kind of following those shapes, you know, like those little, those little shapes. I mean, you see it, you know, it's a neck, but it's just got like this weird blurriness to it that's just, you know, drops in the distance. So, yeah, put some Bactine on her 
and uh looks like i'm gonna do some little browns kind of going through like i said you know sometimes i'll go through and lay a color and it isn't dark enough so i'll go through and kind of fade over it really quick you know you just got to be careful you got to really pay attention to the skin you got to really pay attention to that you're not overworking that area you know that's why i run my machines light you know what i mean because you want the minimal amount of trauma i mean it's going to slow you down you know that that's that's a given it's going to slow you down but sometimes it's worth it to slow down you know I see that a lot. A lot of people, you know, trying to do this stuff, they're running their machines really hard, really fast. And it's just, you know, the, they end up looking really choppy and just really not working out. So I used a five round there and I kind of threw down some, you know, light blue, purple, light blue, purple mix. And, uh, you know, touching up those little highlighted areas. So yeah, kind of laying out this tangerine, going around that little highlight in the nose. You know, the more you do this stuff, the more theories you're going to come up with on your own. So, and that's important, you know, that's what's going to make it yours. You know, you never want to be like, you know, like anyone else. You just want to kind of make it your own. And, and that's where it is coming into, like looking at what I'm doing here, taking, taking it and then applying whatever your ideas are and whatever you know. You know what I mean? And making your own decisions. And that's why the whole time I've been talking about like the decisions you make, it, it's going to make who you are, your style or whatever choices, you know, why people come to you, things like that. They're going to like the decisions you make or they're not going to like the decisions you make, you know, but it, but it's good if you're just making them. So it looks like I'm putting a little bit back team. We're going to do some highlights probably now. Um, looks like it's just soaking. You know, once we get the, to the highlights, it's really, really important to pay attention. You know, it's really easy to get, you know, do overuse of white. Um, you know, sometimes you use too much white, it'll uh, it'll make something look like waxy or plasticky or something like that. You want you want to give it natural, you know, make it look natural. That's why I don't use a lot of white in the flesh tones and things like that. Like I'll mix it down to white, but. A lot of times if I can get away with using like the flesh tone mixed down with whatever color it is and making it that light, that's what I'll do. You know, it's it works out better that way. That way when I do put my true whites in there, it's really true white and they look a lot more wet or the glistens right, you know. So now I'm putting some highlights in the lips, really paying attention to where the highlights are in the in the lips, you know. And 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 not really like taking my time with them. You know, really rinsing that machine out, making sure that that tube is clean. You know, I added a little bit more highlights on the other side of the lip just to uh, kind of show that shape a little bit more and a little more, more wetness. So this is really important is that little tip of white I put right there. I, I You know, I used white, I tapped it in the water and then kind of faded it out into the other colors. A lot of this white I'm using isn't straight white. I'll tap it in the water. You know, only where I want it really, really opaque is where I'll use it just solid, you know. But you see, like I'm fading it off. I'm not just doing lines. Like I'm actually working into the other colors that I'm using, you know. Um, around the eyes are really important. Paying attention to where that exact white is in the eye. You know, um, these ones I'm kind of adding a little bit more to add a little bit more shape. It's not straight white. It's like a watered down white. You know, you can use white in different values. You don't got to use it so opaque everywhere, just where you want it. You know, real, real solid. And usually it's like right inside the eyes is where I want it. See, like too much white, like right around the eyebrows might not work, you know. But see, there's like a pinkish white right there. I'll do it right there in that little brow area. You know, I'll kind of run through the whole thing with the five round running really, really light. You know, it's like a pink, like a magenta and like white mixed. Not usually straight white. You know, and then, and then if I see things that need to be done, you know, like that little bit of brown. You know, I need it a little bit above the eyes. So I go through it and I add a little bit more. You know. You know, it's it's better to build your darks like that because sometimes you go too dark and it's just too dark. 
you know, sometimes things like that, like the white in the hair, probably doesn't have to be necessary. Probably work a little bit more if you use it just in the eyes, you know, and the lips. I don't know. It's all about decisions, you know. See, and that's like a watered down white right there. You know, just kind of fading it in, not like so straight. Maybe that's a little bit of flesh tone mixed with white. Yeah, so just be real careful. You know, you don't want to stick too many lines straight. You want to make sure there's a reason why the white's there. You know, especially if the picture has it, you know, you don't want to make up the whites too much. A lot of times I'll hit it real fast like that. That way it isn't real solid. It just kind of is there a little bit, but not too much. So, yeah, it looks like we're pretty much close. I mean, there isn't much left. So, yeah, one thing that's that, that's really good is if... Uh, like I said, when you're done with these pieces, you take it into Photoshop and make it black and white to saturate it. And then you can see the, the, the value, you know, and make sure you got that. See right here, I'm kind of going over the flesh tones that I left real quick, you know, real, real light, real quick. Just kind of hitting them that way, you know, if the value was off a little bit that I'm looking at it as a whole now, you know, I can adjust it. But you got to be really careful when you do that. That's why I use these long taper bug pin needles because it lets it allows me, you know, that the needles are a little a little smaller in diameter. They're long tapered. They let me go in and out of the skin without abusing the skin so much. Um, I'm actually using a lot of a lot of white. But I'm not using it so, so solid in all the areas. I'm just using it solid in the areas I want it, like inside the lips and in the eyes. Around the eyes, it's not so solid. It's a little bit more fast, real hit, real quick hit. It's not like a straight line. You know. I'm just kind of going off of the tips of those, really paying attention to detail, going off of the tips of those eyelashes, you know, and putting a little bit of blue. It looks like we're pretty close, you know, it looks like it's about, it's about to be called, you know. Looks like I'm just looking at studying it, you know, paying attention to my reference and looking at the tattoo and seeing what I could add, what I could change or seeing what's going on, you know. It looks like there's, you know, a little bit done, need to be done in the, the hair and things like that, but it's pretty much finished, you know? You could call this a finished tattoo and it'd be fine. And there it is, there's the final picture of the tattoo and you could see all the color choices and how I was talking about warm and cool and white highlights and there it is, it's about seven hours, seven and a half hours worth of tattooing. And uh, hopefully you learned some things and got some ideas and some inspiration and Hopefully I can see what you guys are doing next. Thanks.